Hey everyone, Christopher Beast, and in today's video I'm going to be covering Adler's Diaries. These interesting journal entries give us a peek into the administrator's mind, as well as help us understand the turn of events that occurred at S23 prior to the events of the game. So really, with no more delay, let's just get right into this. <laughs> Prior to the events of the game, Adler served as S23's administrator unit where he worked on keeping the facility in working order. However, following Falk's falling ill, he would resign himself to his dorm. From his dorm, he would write in his diary about the events occurring in the facility, and that is what we're going to be covering, his writings. First up, we have Date, 84216. I've been fascinated by a peculiar piece of furniture I discovered in storage a strange box with a removable dial in the front that was confiscated from a worker some time ago. I was instantly drawn to it, though I'm not sure why. When I put my ear on the mechanism, I can hear it faintly clicking, like a clock. Here, he's talking about the astrolobe and how it was confiscated by a protector in the past from a random distraught worker. In the next entry, date 84 21 7. Without Calibri's help, it has become harder to coordinate the logistics cadre. If there's anything good to say about that woman, it's how she knows how to make others respect her orders. Despite her miniature stature, I want to see her today, but her room is still locked. In this note, he talks about a rank Calibri, seemingly have developed a friendship with this unit before her corruption. He denotes how hard it is to control the facility following the loss of this unit. He also states that he tried to go and see her, but that she had locked herself away. This also suggests that sometime between the 6th and the 7th day, the Calibri fell to the corruption. We know the Calibri's fell to the corruption fairly early into this situation, so we are still looking at the early parts of the corruption. And looking in a theory realm, this is most likely the Calibri either in the Calibri dorm, who is locked away in her bedroom, or the Calibri who has locked herself away in the painting room. Either or. Next, the date is 84-21-8. I had a dream tonight, another memory of my gestalt life, I believe. I was wearing my uniform. There was a young woman, her hair white as snow, and I was conducting some sort of test. I had a deck of cards with astronomical symbols on it, and I was asking her to guess which planet I was holding. In this note, he's describing what is likely persona degradation or gestalt memory resurfacing, though it could be something else such as keen yellow profile rewriting, or bioresonant memory influencing. It really depends what you know, walk of theory you come from. It seems as though that his old Gestalt Rife, if we believe that this was a Gestalt Rife, was one of an investigator who administered bioresonant tests. It has been theorized that the person he is interrogating is either Arianne or Arianne's mother, mainly her mother because of the timing it would require for that test to be administered. Next we have date 84219. I was playing with that mechanical lockbox again, of which I am now sure is of some kind of astronomical calendar, when I suddenly remembered a conversation I had with another replica when I was inspecting the mining site. However, it was clearly a model I have never seen before, some type of engineer with an orange chest plate. In my memory, she was just another member of our staff, but no such replica was ever stationed on Serpiansk. Replica memory is not the most reliable, they say, but never before have I experienced such a strange phenomenon. In this note, Adela talks about having met Elster, and how she shouldn't have even existed in the facility, yet due to the corruption, he felt as though she had always been there. This is something that is consistent with really how the influence of Elster and Elanya Co. is displayed on the facility. Next, date 8421A. That a little enigma of the box can only distract me from the chaos around me so long. All the box contained was a small notebook, of which all the pages turned out to be blank. It has been miserable since our beloved commander has fallen ill. I long for her stern guidance, that overwhelming authority in which she bathes the room. Adler in this room opens the astrolabe and finds nothing of value within, aside from an empty notebook, which we're going to get back to later. Then he states that he misses the commander's guidance, reflecting what the known issues page says about him. The next note, date 8421b, more sick, making my work even harder. How are we meant to shoulder this workload with no reinforcements? My only consolation is that our protector staff decreases, so does the workforce we oversee. While more and more replica end up in the hospital wing, gestalt workers seem to succumb much too fast for any attempts at treatment. In this note, he states that it's a blessing that people are dying, as it doesn't mean he has to watch over them anymore, or, you know, command them. 
He also adds that it's becoming impossible to shoulder this without any reinforcements and that, simply put, the structure of the facility is decaying. He adds that it is impossible to save Gestalt workers once they are infected, which is something that holds true if you read any of the Metaverse database notes which seem to corroborate that evidence. Next note, 8421C, another diary filled, for no benefit of but my own satisfaction. I've ordered, not ordered a new one yet, since I spent my saved ration marks on that marvelous looking fountain pen, but I guess I'll make use of that notebook. He notes how he finished the diary and how he bought a pen to further write more future entries, before deciding to write in that new journal he got from the Astral Loop. It should be noted that this new diary is what all further notes are going to be from, and that this diary is a golden yellow, and we find it within the shrine later in the game. I've started yet another diary. How time flies. The work is dull and monotonous as ever in Serpiansky, but a bright light illuminates my day. Today I was invited to a meeting by Commander Falk, and she was as magnificent as ever. This diary takes place after the prior entries, from the date perspective, yet seems to denote events that happened prior to the loss of the facility. It is also the beginning of the loop, suggesting that either Ador has succumbed to the insanity or that the loop's beginning took the facility back by several days. Another alternate perspective to look at this is that this event is much like Elster's memory sequence, in that Adler is having a temporary jump back to the past, much like Elster did, either due to bioresonance or whatever else you think is causing the influence on the facility. Next note, date 8421D, another day passes. During my meeting with the commander today, I felt the strangest sensation of familiarity as I sat with her. Sadly, our meeting was interrupted by an unexpected power outage. This note showcases the meeting again, and that Adler did not exactly notice that something was wrong with the repeating of events. It also continues to show that Falk is operating despite falling ill prior, which questions Adler's validity of his statements. This note also notes that the power outages which we see by the events of the game are occurring, showcasing that as the loop continues, the world does change with each turn, something that holds consistent with the Dreamer's Diaries. Next note. Date 8421D. Never before have I felt so strongly the sensation of deja vu as I have these past few days. Ador is slowly becoming aware of the cycle. As it continues and marches forwards, he can't help but notice it. Next one. Date 8421D. When I checked the pages of my diary today, I noticed that for some inexplicable reason, I seem to have dated my prior entries with today's date. What an embarrassing mistake. This is the first time that Adar noticed the presence of the cycle directly, showcasing that his understanding of the presence of the cycle requires him to read his diary, something I'm going to get back to later. Date 8421D Every day feels like I've lived it before, and even stronger is the sensation that something is somehow just slightly out of place. Adler is getting more and more realization about the nature of the cycle, and that's going to continue in this next note. Date 8421D why is my diary filled with entries I cannot recall writing? Why are they all dated to today? Has the loss of my beloved commander finally gotten to my mind? Am I going insane? I fear what will happen to me if anyone finds out. I am alone in this. If they discover my notes, I'll be decommissioned too. In this note, he finally fully realizes the nature of the cycle, but also denotes that the commander has fallen sick, suggesting that the cycle is changing over time. It's no longer him having the same meeting as before. He notes that he's afraid of the cycle and what would happen to himself and believes that he's alone in this situation, which is an interesting way to look at the perspective of the cycle because it seems like Adler believes it's just a defect of his own. Date 8421D, something is wrong, I can feel it, is this really madness? When I read the pages of my diary, I recall events that never happened, a yesterday that never was, yet it feels as real as the one I actually experienced. This cannot merely be a defect of my mind. In this note, he rejects the results of this, and he rejects that it could be his own insanity, and instead is beginning to believe that the loop actually holds some bias in reality. Date 8421D Feels as though, in this room, I peer into another version of reality. How, I do not know. Perhaps I, too, have become sick like the others, without realizing, but I will not succumb. In this note, he accepts having fallen sick to the virus, and claims to have seen another version of reality while within this room. It's interesting to think about that idea, that perhaps, thinking about fourth dimensional types of things, this room, and really Serpiancy in general, is a convergence of multiple timelines, 
and thus why the loop occurs. And by being in this room, he is able to see alternate situations of what happened on that day. It's just another way to really approach the loop and think about it uh, from a lore perspective, that using the bioresonance or the Canadian yellow. Next up. Date 8421D, a slow accumulation of reproduction errors or gradual corruption of information, a story misremembered, slowly morphing with each retelling like genetic material, mutating and evolving like the replica mind copied over and over from an aging template. In this note, he states more like that cryptic Adler we are used to rather than the scared and confused Adler that has dominated most of these notes, representing that he is becoming more cynical as time moves forward, no longer afraid that he might be going insane, but rather embracing his insanity and believing that it is the world itself that is wrong and insane. He also draws a connection to the replica's mind, which is really cool to read about because it helps us really understand how from the replica's perspective, they understand they're something that's copied from something that is long gone. They understand they're not exactly brand new creations. We don't really get to see a lot of other perspectives like that in this story. Finally, date 8421D, I do not know, but I will find out. And then the next note, date 8421D, the answer lies below, I can feel it. Someone or something calls for me there in the mine. These notes showcase that Adler has changed, now determined to find the answers for what caused this cycle and is willing to descend down into the mines in order to find the answers. And I really feel like this is the birth of the Adler we know from the game. No longer the standard unit that's just following orders and doing his best to love his folk, rather the cynical and almost nihilistic man who has realized that everything is for naught for various reasons. I feel like Adler changed from the, from over the course of these cycles, and he's no longer really going to be able to handle it any longer by the time the events of the game occur. While we're here, I'd like to talk about two theories that heavily pertain to the diaries. So the first one is impartial knowledge theory. Impartial knowledge theory is the idea that Adler only knows what his diaries tell him. It's supported by the diaries, as we can note him not really truly understanding the cycle until he reads his prior entries, and upon him doing that, he decays a lot quicker. So this assumes that his knowledge of the loops is heavily flawed. As, as such, taking him as a solid reference for understanding the nature of the loops in itself is a flawed perspective. He doesn't understand the loops, why would we trust somebody that doesn't understand the loops to understand the loops? Um, the Fruit Loops. And, and it really would indicate that his opinions on the cycle and his statements at the end of the game regarding the fruitless natures of Alistair's actions are made without strong knowledge of the truth, and they're rather made based off of his own opinions uh, of what it would do, and he doesn't really understand that what's going on. Adding to this, though, is the concept of who he got the answers from. At the end of his diaries, he talks about there are answers. There's somebody who's going to give him those answers in the minds, and he's going to go ask it for those answers. And if you're somebody who's been following the Cain Yellow theorization, well, then you know that the thing at the bottom of the minds is the flesh below Wang. And this theory states that Adler descended down into nowhere in pursuit of answers, and due to this decision, found the scale of his corruption greatly increase. This is where the Adler we know emerges from, the one who's going to be willing to kill Issa and Elster. It's because he found the flesh below, and he consulted with it becoming, either figuratively or literally how you take it, the pallid mask from the Kenyan Yellow, either be by directly working with the corruption to get the answers he wanted, or being corrupted by the corruption to become something that they can use and manipulate. And it is important to note that Adler units are highly susceptible to bioresonance, and I don't think it's really smart for a unit that's weak to bioresonance to go down into a mine with a giant bioresonant creature not gonna go well but that's just my thoughts this video is not my complete covering of adler i need to sit down and have a video where i talk about everything to do with adler but arguably adler is one of the most complex characters in the lore perhaps even more so than arian and elster he is immensely complex to understand and has lots of moving pieces so i'm not here or there in the ability to cover him at the moment so that will have to wait for another day I hope you guys all enjoyed this. I know I enjoyed covering Adler's insanity. I gave myself a lot of script freedom with this video because I felt like it would be more important to try and convey what I believe is going on here in my own words rather than following a strict script of my own writing. 
and I hope you in, at least partially enjoyed that, or at least still understood the method or message I'm trying to uh, push with this video. I hope you enjoyed this video though. If you like my videos, feel free to subscribe, it helps the channel out. And if you'd like to talk to either me or other Signalis fans about the game, theories, lore, or even mods, because I work on Signalis mods, I have a link in my description to my Discord, which is called VSL. It's linked below. So, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all, well, next time. Thank you.